Once a top 1% streamer on Apex release, and now just an occasional streamer with average 600 viewers 3 years later, Dizzy was one of the biggest streamers in the early days of Apex. Coming from seemingly nothing to instantly blowing up with the game's release, I wanted to cover what exactly led to his decline. When Apex was released on the 4th of February 2019, Dizzy was there, streaming for an average of 23 viewers. That seemed to be his average viewership back when he was streaming Fortnite and Counter-Strike, in which he had competed under the organization Seaside Gaming, but word of his skill quickly spread. Dizzy and AC were already both ahead of the curve gameplay-wise, attracting lots of viewers with their chill personality, as well as their sick movement and aiming skills, leading to high kill games. And by the 10th of February, Dizzy had already averaged over a thousand viewers on his stream. On February 8th, King Richard tweeted that he was going to be the team captain for the upcoming Twitch Rivals event, and he was looking for teammates. When it comes to finding teammates, I'd rather know who I'm dropping with before it's go time. Z League has a new team up feature that lets you find other players who are playing Apex right now. The profiles show their stats, preferred playstyle, and voice chat preferences. It is as easy as sending an invite or starting a chat just to get started. Who knows? You might even team up with me. Thank you, Z League for sponsoring this video, make sure to check out Team Up in the description. Dizzy responded with a picture of his stats with the words, let's run it. Many things happen in the following days, with the most important date of Dizzy's career being February 12, 2019. On this day, Dizzy was one of the first to be signed as a professional under an organization, that being NRG. We don't know for sure, but we can assume that King Richard, who also was on NRG at the time, had something to do with it. On this date, Dizzy also set the world record for kills with a 33 kill game and would later on participate in Twitch Rivals alongside a lot of huge streamers, playing on the same team with King Richard and Ninja. Dizzy impressed not only his teammates, but the entire Apex community as he carried the team to victory. This kid is the fastest player on the planet right now in Apex. You can't keep up with him, so if he finds kills, he's gonna slay him. Why are we playing with him? He's gonna take all our subs, Tim! Now! The format of this tournament was a kill race, where the teams amassed points by queuing into public lobbies and just getting as many kills as possible. While King Richard and Ninja had respectable amounts of kills, Dizzy almost always scored over 15, if not up to 20 kills per match, allowing their team, King's Canyon, to dominate the tournament, and by the end of it, they managed to win by one point. Be surprised. I want to know who it is. Dun, it was dun, dun, dun. King Canyon by one point! Are you kidding me? One point? One point? In an interview by Forbes the next day, Dizzy said that his plans were to continue grinding out the streaming, living out the dream as a full-time streamer, while stating that he still wanted to continue being a competitive Apex player, saying that this was only the beginning. And going full-time for Dizzy was a piece of cake. As looking back, on the 11th of February, Dizzy was already averaging about 2,000 viewers, with 36,000 followers. And by the time this article was released, Dizzy was already averaging 11,000 viewers with almost a hundred thousand followers to boot. In the manner of a week, Dizzy had gone from an unknown small-time Counter-Strike and Fortnite streamer to one of the biggest streamers on the website, peaking at almost 15,000 Twitch subscribers throughout February. At this point, Dizzy was the talk of the entire Apex community, and even broke the barriers into mainstream media, with plenty of articles mentioning this massive story. Everyone wanted to know about the 18-year-old who came out of nowhere, blowing up and making huge waves. But Team King's Canyon, which was the original roster consisting of Ninja, King Richard, and Dizzy, continued dominating the early Apex kill race scene, with the trio winning free Code Red tournaments, with the first one starting just another three days after the Twitch Rivals, and the others a few weeks later. All of these constant tournament wins, in such a short amount of time, ended up stacking and compounding with each other, and in turn bolstered Dizzy's online presence by a lot. And so he closed out the month of February with almost 400,000 followers, and 17,000 average concurrent viewers. Dizzy was turning into the poster child for Apex, living out every kid's dream of becoming an overnight success and what a success he was having. On the 6th of March 2019, Energy added another member to the roster and you might have heard of him, his name is Asu. The dynamic duo of Dizzy and Asu continued dominating Apex on Twitch, playing together frequently, both in the occasional public matches, but also in ranked and most importantly, in tournaments. The duo teamed up with Mendukusai on the 30th of March 2019 for the T1 Face It Apex
Apex Invitational, where they placed in the second place, and competed alongside King Richard in the TwitchCon Europe Showdown a few weeks later, where they also placed in the second place. After that, they'd see success in other content creator tournaments, such as EXP Pro AM and TwitchCon San Diego in 2019. Dizzy said that these events would only be the beginning, and the explosive growth continued throughout March 2019, and everyone expected this to only continue or to stay at the same level. But Dizzy started seeing a rapid decline in growth thereafter, stabilizing at a completely reasonable average of a few thousand viewers. But as the views started dwindling, so did Dizzy's motivation. Energy finalized the professional roster on the 16th of May in 2019 with the signing of Moore, who had just left Ghost Gaming. Together, ACU, Dizzy, and Moore would become one of the largest content creators slash professional teams in the Apex scene. But with the fame came a heavy weight to carry, which many would argue that they weren't able to handle. And when facing other professional teams, Energy always fell short from the lack of macro knowledge and general team synergy. This roster's best result was in the Apex Legends preseason Invitational in late 2019, where they would place on 12th place out of 80 invited pro teams. But that doesn't mean that Dizzy and the Energy Squad wouldn't stop farming ranked or public matches and content creator tournaments. Seeing the Energy Squad struggle may have That's contributed to their lower viewership, as fans realized the streamer they idolized as the best player in the world wasn't keeping up with the unrealistic expectations they had set on him. In the first days that the game had come out, Dizzy was pulling regular 21 hour streams, and the hopeful prodigy even said that he'd be aiming for over a thousand hour stream in the year. But as we can see in the stats, that's not exactly what happened. In December through February 2019, Dizzy had streamed for almost 300 hours per month, averaging at 10 hours a day. Clearly, this isn't a sustainable amount of time to be on, and it's a big problem with streamers nowadays, as it really can only grow when they're alive. After March 2019, viewers could tell something was off, as Dizzy had gone from streaming almost 300 hours a month to just 170 in March, 1 and 10 in April, and other than a few outliers by autumn that year, Dizzy had streamed less than 50 hours per month, with less than 100 hours from November to the end of the year. The lack of growth could have been from lack of results, lack of streaming hours, or both. During 2019, everyone knew who Dizzy was, but it wasn't really anywhere to watch him. The only way to consume Dizzy's content was by watching his streams and the regular YouTube video, but they had been putting down less effort and time into the streams, so this turned out to be very difficult. There was a regular, pretty steady flow of videos, but the viewers were desiring more, and there wasn't any more content to get. The lack of streaming and the inconsistent in-game performance could be chalked up to real-life problems, but Dizzy never really explained what was going on, so all viewers could do was speculate. Can you tell me why you stopped playing Apex? Like, what changed your opinion about the game? I just stopped enjoying it. It's just the BR genre in general. It just... It just, it's very exhausting. What we can say is that the constant break from streams, the seeming lack of motivation and inconsistent performance was negatively affecting Dizzy's viewership and probably to a certain degree, his mental health as well. On December 10th, 2019, Dizzy steps back from competitive Apex and leaves energy to focus on streaming. Dizzy was planning on having a huge return stream on the 11th of October, which he did, but as we've come to learn, Dizzy's return was short-lived. He streamed every day until the 15th of December, a few days later, took another few days off, doing one Epic stream on the 19th and then going completely dark until the end of January in the following year. Dizzy seemed like he was completely burnt out on Apex. It was the odd Apex stream here and there, but he seemed to be testing the waters with variety content, Fortnite, Counter-Strike, at the count of his viewership. Eventually, Valorant was released on June 2nd and turned into Dizzy's main game, which makes sense seeing as Counter-Strike, Dizzy's previous main game, has a lot of things in common with Valorant, both being a tactical shooter. But on the 29th of June, 2020, Dizzy disappeared without a trace. We didn't see much of Dizzy following that stream on the 29th of June, but he announced a sudden return on the 18th of January 2021, explaining that he wasn't happy about his inconsistent streams and performance, and as such had taken a long break to better himself. He also added that he was deeply impacted by the death of Wreckful back in July 2020, which put Dizzy in a depressive state, leading to the huge break in 2020. Dizzy returned to a huge 6,000 viewer Valorant stream on the same day, and once the hype had dwindled down, he stabilized at around 
a thousand average concurrent viewers for the rest of the year. 2022 was also pretty inconsistent stream-wise, with Dizzy taking huge occasional breaks from streaming. But on the 14th of June, instead of leaving his fans in the dark, Dizzy went on Twitter and explained that he was battling anxiety and was currently taking medication for it, hoping to be back to streaming soon. He made a return on July 15th and has ever since been pretty consistent in starting his streams. However, at the moment, it appears that Dizzy isn't playing Valorant as much and is once again exploring the variety side of Twitch, spending most of his hours on Roblox and Realm of the Mad God, to the tune of about 600 average viewers. There have been a few odd streams in 2022 with Dizzy playing Apex, but as far as we know, there are no plans for the official return to the game that once made him famous.